Heal With Us 3 is brought to you by Carpet Savers of Tide Water Inc. Carpet Cleaning and Carpet Restoration will make you love your carpet again. Cheaper than a steamer, better than a pro. Scan the QR code for discounts and appointments. Carpet Savers of Tide Water. Licensed, bonded, insured. Welcome to Heal With Us, where we aim to inspire, strengthen, and empower. Now let's begin to heal. Hey y'all, I'm Toya, and I'm investigating the business of everyday people like you and I. This is Dr. Nikisha. She'll be checking in on your heart. And this is Tam. She'll be enlightening you with fun facts you didn't even know you needed. She's just nerdy like that. Now that you know us, let's get in the business. In your business. So, um, when you think about hope, Dr. Nikisha, what does it mean to you? Hope? Um, for me, hope is, I want to say, having something you believe in and something to look forward to. A little bit of both. Okay. Tam? What do I think of hope? Mm -hmm. When I think of the word, um... I don't know. That's a good question. I guess, uh, I don't know. Um, hmm. I've never really said, yeah. I don't really think about it. Um, hope is, I guess, the things, getting the things that you, that aren't seen or that you think that are not enreached, maybe. Mm -hmm. I guess. Yeah. I don't know. I've never thought about it. That's a good question, yeah. though. Um, and I think for me, hope is kind of like the heartbeat of humanity. Like mm -hmm. without hope, you of know. Of course you do. Right? <laughs> I know. You, you, you <laughs> bounce back. I got my little lame answer. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> so, um, Dr. Nikisha, how did you find your hope? Ooh, that's a great question, Toya Bell. I'm mean, sorry, Toya <laughs> Howard. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, so, how did I find hope? Mm hmm Wow. I mean, I think that question can fluctuate mm -hmm. because, you know, hope to me is a different focus. But I will say, um, overall, um, my hope is in Christ. Okay. I mean, really, my hope is in Christ um, because he just has shown up for me in ways that I know without him I would have crashed and run. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, mm -hmm. I think that was when I pretty much kind of surrendered my life and said, you know what, I don't know what I'm doing. And uh -huh. I am putting my hope and trust in the wrong things and it's letting me down. And when I started to learn to put my hope in him, not saying I do it perfectly, but, uh -huh. you know, um, I've seen the difference, you know, and uh -huh. just my overall well-being. So, okay. Yeah. Tam? Um, I would have to say, I would have to piggyback off of Keisha. But I would also like to add myself because I have broken a lot of generational curses. I have beat a lot of statistical outcomes and just a lot of things. And I was my biggest cheerleader. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had people, not many, but I did have a few that were kind of, you know, egging me on to get past that finish mm -hmm. line. But it was mostly myself being my biggest cheerleader, so. And um, for me, hope, I found hope, like, in my darkest, probably, hour when I, it was just nowhere, nothing else to do. There was nowhere else to go. I couldn't go any lower, so I think that's when my, I kind of found my hope. Mm -hmm. um, do you connect hope to an emotion? Definitely. Uh, for me, hope is connected to joy, it's connected to um, fulfillment and passion, it's connected to love. I mean, you know, like I said, sometimes it's situational, so 
Um, if there's like hope and a seeing a goal or you know dream fulfilled, mm -hmm. then um, it could be just like aspiration or motivation connected to that or excitement. It, you know. So mm -hmm. yeah, definitely. Okay, Tam. Do I connect, Do you hope, connect hope to a word? An emotion. An emotion. Mm -hmm. um, yes, I would say determination. Okay. You know, once you have your mind made up and you're determined, that's when that hope follows mm -hmm. after you make that determining situation mm -hmm. or determining factor. Mm -hmm. So I would say determination. Okay. It's crazy because I'm like, my, I, my emotion to hope is like sadness. So I don't feel hope until like something is like down or, yeah. So I've never had the feeling of hope if stuff was going good. So yeah, I think I'm opposite. I'm, wow, that's okay. That's okay. You know. That makes you feel Yes. Yep. Um. So that's all I have on on hope today. But um, just remember, tomorrow is one day closer to you being the person that you want to be. Just make one choice at a time. Thank you for letting me get in y'all business. In your business. Blessings. This is Dr. Nakisha Bell Griffin. How's your heart today? So ladies, today um, we're gonna continue our conversation about hope. And I'm gonna kind of focus on two things, uh, why people lose hope and how to fuel hope. Um, so I'm gonna dig right in. So three, key reasons people lose hope and this is just from my research and my personal you know i guess observations mm -hmm. <laughs> um are one discontentment two disappointment and three displeasure okay and i'll give you guys the floor to kind of expand upon that but um when it comes to discontentment um, it pretty much evolves from dissatisfaction with your circumstances, relationships, career, or some aspect of your lifestyle, or even yourself, dissatisfaction with yourself. Um, disappointment, of course, um, produces sadness and dismay. So that may tie a little bit into what Toya was talking about, but we'll kind of you know, explore that later. Um, and then displeasure pretty much creates a sense of annoyance, disapproval, and anger. I'll let y'all kind of think about that for a minute. Um, each of these characteristics can be rooted in five things, and there's probably more, but these are five I'm going to identify. Um, one is unmet expectations and goals. Two is unrealistic expectations and goals. Three, and this kind of ties into what you were saying, talking about determination, it's on the flip end of that. The inability or refusal to see other alternatives or to create a new pathway towards a desired end. So it's almost like giving up, pretty much. Okay. Um, and then four would be unmet needs, and five, harmful belief systems. Mm. So, yes. Um, and when thinking about hope, it brought me to the proverb um, that hope deferred makes the heart sick, um, which is very true. It's very hard to um, function anywhere um, in any role, if you are not, you don't have some type of hope motivating you, pushing you forward. Um, and one thing I find very challenging is just waiting, like waiting for, like in the midst of something you're hoping for to come to fruition. Like for some people, it might be conceiving a child. Mm -hmm. Some people, it might be getting married, you know, seeing you're reaching that career goal, whatever it might be. Um, the waiting, I think, is where the challenge comes in. Because mm -hmm. a lot of people, you know, in the process, especially in the beginning, you're excited. You're like, yes, I can do this. This is going to happen. But then when it doesn't happen when you want, and that waiting is stretched, it's like, how do you hold on to your mm -hmm. hope? You know, how do you wait in the process of seeing something come to fruition? So I'm going to kind of throw that question to y'all. So, you know, when you really have your eyes and your hopes set on something, how do you kind of wait? How do you, you know? Huh. So, I mean, <laughs> it is really sometimes I don't wait okay. and I feel like I okay. jump okay. to something else, but it doesn't fulfill the right. want or the need for the, you know, right. the desire, the hope at hand. Yes. So, but I think, yeah, I probably just jump to something else. Okay. 
and then end up back right. waiting again. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. that and there's that. Yes. Okay. How about you, For me, the way that God has my life set up, and it has happened over and over again, that if there was something that I got high expectations for and I'm hoping for and it doesn't happen, I have to wait. I sit in it because of the way that I've known other things have it's a flow. It's just a mm -hmm. pattern. It always happens for me when I'm hoping for something. I have to wait because that's just the way God got my life set up. Mm -hmm. I don't know about anybody right, else, but right. that's just okay. the way it always has worked for me. And I've never, because I deal with anxiety so much, I'm not the type of person that say, well, like Toya said, oh, if it doesn't, I ain't going to wait. I'm just going to do mm -hmm. But then you find, you said you find something yes. like that because mm -hmm. you didn't wait. Yeah. I have anxiety so bad. I'm not even going to attempt to even step my pinky toe out <laughs> to say, you know what, I ain't waiting. I, no, yeah. I sit in it, and mm -hmm. when I sit in it, I wallow. Yeah. And that's what I was going to ask you. How do you sit in it? Because mm -hmm. I've definitely had moments where I've had to wait a while for something that um, I was hoping to come to fruition, and I found myself complaining. I found mm -hmm. myself, you know, feeling sorry for myself. Mm -hmm. I found myself being angry, the mm -hmm. displeasure rising mm -hmm. up, um, the disappointment, all of these things, um, and it didn't make it any better. Mm -hmm. It didn't, like, make nope. make the thing come to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It just made it worse. It made it worse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. so um, I think you learn over time to kind of learn how to wait gracefully, but, um, you know, depending on the situation, that is not always... So no, I, mean, I commend you for being able to sit in it, but hopefully, you know, we'll talk about ways to kind of be able to wait and, and wait with grace mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> and wait with hope. Wait I want to hear that. No, does it have, have to be pretty? Does it have to be cute? It don't have to always okay. be pretty, though. Uh, but basically, the bottom line is um, hopelessness can become more intense when we dwell in the discontentment and disappointment and displeasure for too long, and it can even shift to depression and even higher heights of anxiety. Mm -hmm. So we have to be very careful about um, allowing um, ourselves to get into that pit of despair, you know, when we are not seeing things, you know, evolve the way we want it mm -hmm. to or as fast as we want it to. So now I get to talk about the good stuff, <laughs> and that is how to fuel hope. So the second part of that proverb, so the first part is hope deferred makes the heart sick, and the second part is, but a longing fulfilled is a tree of life, which is amazing. So hope is connected to a longing, something you really desire, you really want. And I'm going to ask y'all before I continue, um, is there anything you're hoping for right now? I can answer. Go ahead. I'm hoping that this podcast, this uh, <laughs> YouTube and everything, that God continues to move in and through it and have his glory all around it. I hope that we are reaching people and we are really healing people. Mm -hmm. That's my hope. Yes, I, love I like that. it. I love that. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, that's my hope as well. Uh, yeah, I had a lot of hopes come true last year, oh, okay. so I think okay. that's why, yes. you yes. know. you just celebrated one year anniversary. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes, yes, okay. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so um, I'll answer that for myself. I've been really just going through some of the things I've went through recently. My hope is really just to learn to um, stay in peace, just really, really um, stay in peace and joy. You know, I mean, of course you want all the things, the perfect job and all that, whatever, but I mean, at the end of the day, no matter what, I just want to be at peace, mm -hmm. you know, within, and I want to be able to share that peace with others and, you know, just be full of joy. So, yeah. Um, so, here are some ways we can fuel hope, okay? Number one, focus on your blessings instead of the negative. And of course, that's really challenging because um, when you're really, really wanting or desiring something, hoping for something, it's like you're hyper-focused on that thing. Mm -hmm. So it's really hard to shift your mind to other things, but there's blessings happening around us all the time. And I find, too, that sometimes that blessing could just be trying to bless other people. Mm -hmm. Like, that takes your mind off mm -hmm. yourself. So... Um, just any way that you can focus on your blessings and, um, you know, be a blessing to others. Number two, find your hope-filled people. We already talk about our tribe and all of that, but connecting to others who have what you need and don't mind sharing it is very crucial. 
um, because there are times when you are going through a really rough season and you're going to need to borrow hope from other people, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, and it could be in tough season. It could be even in the smallest things, but it can make such a biggest difference when you have somebody that is just there to encourage you, mm -hmm. you know, and to be able to just build you up in that way and help you to continue to believe in whatever it is you're expecting or waiting for. Um, number three is fill in your happy spaces. And I love how Tam, on one of our episodes, we are talking about happy accidents was just talking about things that can you can do to make yourself happy like listening to music and you know all of those wonderful things you have to be intentional though um and that's something i've learned i've kind of like try to wait for myself to be in the mood and the mood sometimes never comes <laughs> so like <laughs> so i um have learned to try to really like actually schedule happy spaces into my day and that might just be like a music break or it might be I'm going to give me a diffuser because that's going to be a part of my <laughs> happy space um but like I try to like even some days before going to work breaking the routine by stopping to get a cup of coffee I mean that just makes me feel happy mm -hmm. you know so anything that kind of just shifts you out of that space of feeling hopeless and discouraged and all of that um can be intentional about doing that as often as possible. Because like I said, um, if you allow yourself to stay stuck, it's gonna, the more you allow yourself to stay stuck and the longer, the harder it is to come out of that. Mm -hmm. So yes, so being very intentional. Um, and then figure out a plan to move forward. So we need to identify what's been holding our hope hostage and set our eyes on breaking free. And a lot of times um, we kind of just think things are going to just fall into place. And, you know, I do believe that God, you know, meets us, but he, we have a part in that, too. So we have to, you know, actually kind of have a strategy and a plan for, you know, OK, what am I going to do? What steps do I need to take to see this thing that I'm, you know, hoping for, you know, manifest in my life? And it may be that you have to shift. Because it might be something that's unrealistic. Like when I was working on my dissertation, my hope was to be finished way before I was. But I realized that was not going to happen. So I had to kind of shift my goals and give myself grace and stretch my timeline out a little further. And it mm -hmm. actually was a blessing because I was able to kind of slow down and really enjoy the process more. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, so sometimes just being willing to say, you know what, this is not working. I need to figure out something else. And then being able to shift because a lot of us get locked into, you no, know, it has to be this and mm -hmm. it has to be that way. And then we find ourselves stuck, you know, and we could have freed ourselves a long time ago if we had came up with just one separate step or whatever, you know. All right. So after you figure out your plan for moving forward, um, the last thing is fighting for your hope. Um, because there are a lot of things fighting for our attention. We are, like I said, going to have to be intentional and determined, love that you use that word, um, to stay in the center of, a, center of hope. And one way we can do that is by making sure our beliefs are aligned to our core values and to, you know, we have realistic expectations and that we are, whenever we see ourselves straying further away from what we're hoping for, we pull ourselves back in that right direction. So, yeah, so I think that's um, all I have. And I did want to ask y'all, um, do y'all have any comments? Do y'all have any thoughts or anything? My, my last thoughts are like, I like how you gave us, you know, ways to fuel hope because not all of us even realize we're not fueling it. Okay. I think, you know, for me being in the sadness and then finding hope, but not actually looking for right. it, you know, right. intentionally yeah. during other times yeah. is, you know, but that was very helpful. Okay. Well, thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you. Yes. Glad. Oh, you want me? <laughs> okay. I'm oh, sorry. So my thoughts. First of all, I think in the first part of your segment, you talked about characteristics. Mm -hmm. Can you repeat one and four? I think those two resonated with me. One and three? Oh, you mean one the characteristics. Four. I'm sorry, yes. not the um, actual. Okay. Um, so one was unmet expectations and goals, and then four was unmet needs. Okay. Unmet needs, I think I can see how that can kind of deter your hope, um, especially if it's 
animate needs, mm -hmm. i.e. a meal. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Needs mm -hmm. that are really, really needs. Mm -hmm. Clothing to keep you warm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Running water. Mm -hmm. And I give those examples because there are those who, you know, everyday life is a struggle right. for them. Right. Yeah. And if that's all they see and that's all they're living in and they're dealing with that every day, that can strip you of hope. <laughs> it can strip you of a lot of things. So that's why when you read those, I didn't want to interrupt when you were talking about them, but I said I wanted her to go back to one and four, but it was really four that really kind of stuck with me. It's just needs. When I think when I heard you say that word needs, I thought about your really right. basic say, everyday yes, needs, yes, yes. like soap. We right. take soap for granted, right. but there was a situation where when I was a supervisor for the water department, uh, there was this young man who was like a big brother advocate for a young male, mm -hmm. and he brought him in, I guess they were just coming from school, and he brought in this young male with his grandmother, and he said, you know, I called out the supervisor because I just, I, I, I got a situation going on here. Mm -hmm. He said, you see this young man here? He just got kicked out of school and expelled for fighting because the kids were picking on him because he smelled. Mm -hmm. I just heard that. Mm -hmm. I, I helped him. I did what he needed to do. Well, I got further background because the, this young man had to call me back and we had to get some other stuff straight and gave me the other story. The story was that the grandmother who is, I think she was 82, had to get legal custody of this young boy that was expelled, um, expelled, not suspended, right. but expelled, and his sister, because the daughter, their mother, her daughter, was having complication with drugs. Mm -hmm. um, she lived on a fixed income. The house was really condemned. The city had just wow. went in a week before this young man came to pay the water bill for them. House condemned by the city because she can't afford to, to fix it up. Mm -hmm. And he told me the dire straits of this house. They didn't have soap. They didn't have the basic needs. Right. So we may take toothpaste mm -hmm. or toiletries right. for right. granted. But in that case, that's a dire need. Yeah. So could you imagine that young boy's hope? Right, mm -hmm. exactly. And I'm glad you pointed that out because a lot of times when hope is connected to, or the loss of hope is connected to unmet needs, it also leads to a sense of helplessness. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like there is nothing I can do. Yes. You know, because, I mean, especially when we were talking about children, they have no really very little control over their lives and the decisions that are being made. So it's very easy for them to say, this is, this is all I know, this is what's happening, there's nothing I can do about mm -hmm. it. You know? yeah. So um, it's, that hope is very important. Yeah. It's very it important is. and it's connected to so many avenues of our life. So mm -hmm. thank you for pointing that out. Sure. Yes. All right, well, thank you, ladies. Um, I appreciate you all. Your conversation always insightful, um, you know, feedback. And for you all, I hope that you will take this message and do whatever you need to do to fuel your hope and to also help feed and fuel other people's hope because um, we're all in this together. So until next time, remember, healing is a process and also guard your heart with all diligence because out of it flows the issues of life. Peace. Well, hello, everyone. Come on over to the nurse corner. I got some good bits and bops for you. So I want to kind of do a continuation of my essential oil segment from last episode, but I'm going to put a little spin on it. I'm going to tweak it a little bit. So we have the warm summer days coming and we all know how we like to have outside gatherings and we invite family and friends over, but there are also some, some things in crowds that invite themselves that didn't get the invitation. <laughs> and that company or crowd would be insects, okay? Yeah. So I'm going to give you some little tidbits, bits and bots, um, of how to kind of control or, or repel these uh, pesky little guests or invites. 
Um, they, they didn't get the invitation. They ain't bringing no cups. They ain't bringing no buns. So we don't need them. You know, we, we, we just don't need them coming along because they really won't invite it. So I'm going to talk about the essential oils that I want to bring to the conversation is rosemary, lemongrass or centronella, and lavender and peppermint. I like that word. Centronella? Cit Citronella. Centronella. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the things that I'm going to talk about is um, you can help repel the insects and bugs inside as well as outside, but mostly outside. And I just know, you know, it's almost cookout season. So, you know, flies are just, they're annoying. They're annoying. And I don't understand what is their purpose of existing. <laughs> I know God created every animal in his image, however, comma. Yes, not <laughs> oh, not them? Oh, okay. Well, I mean, they were breathing, living, think do flies breathe? Anyway, yes. <laughs> focus. Okay. Because my A has DD. So anyway. Rosemary. So for mosquitoes, they, they repel mosquitoes. Mosquitoes hate the smell of rosemary. Okay. So you can plant rosemary outside of your home, like in the the front parameters of your home close to your door. If you have a porch that you sit on, you know, plant a couple of rosemary plants by those um, areas where you sit or congregate mm -hmm. and it will repel the um, mosquitoes. Um, and rosemary are a perfect plant for the summertime. So they don't summertime heat. So they really don't need a lot of maintenance to keep them alive. So they thrive in the heat. So if you're not a green thumb person, which I'm not, um, mm -hmm. rosemary would be the perfect flower um, to put outside. So a couple of ways that you can use or things that you can use with the rosemary. One is a spray. And to make the spray with the plant, um, you, would have, you would need one cup of the rosemary plant in about a cup of water. And you want to boil that water for 30 minutes. OK, um, and then in another container, you want to add a, a quart of cool water and it can be distilled or tap water, but preferably distilled. Um, so once that 30 minute has passed with the rosemary boiling in the quart of water, you want to strain that rosemary um, into the container with the cool water and you can strain it in a strainer or you can get some cheesecloth and wrap it up in there and just kind of strain it. Or if no one knows what a cheesecloth is, you can get a, a, a stocking, um, like a knee high, or just cut a stocking, tie, you know, put the rosemary in there, tie it, and then just squeeze it, and it'll strain it that way. Um, and um, you want to add that mixture so you done, you've mixed the, the um, rosemary, boiled in the water, in the cool water. You want to mix that into a spray bottle and use it for bug spray but you have to keep it in the refrigerator, keep it cool. So just make sure you label the container so nobody thinks, oh, some Kool-Aid, no. <laughs> so make sure you just label that spray bottle and just spray. You can spray it around the perimeters of your house, um, you know, spray it out where you're sitting or just spray it, you know, if you have a sidewalk near your house or your driveway or what have you, the areas that you frequent a lot where mosquitoes will, you know, be prevalent. So why, how come why they didn't tell us about this at camp, I know. at summer camp? <laughs> <laughs> because they want you to put on this harmful DEET, that's D-E-E-T, which is like the off. normal, yeah, oh. it's like the normal bug spray that everybody knows mm -hmm. off that you spray on. And it has a lot of horrible chemicals in it. And honestly, a lot of people just don't take the time to figure out, hey, What's a more healthy alternative yes. way to kill bugs? Uh -huh. Well, I don't want to kill them because they are life too, <laughs> and they have a purpose. Yes, they do. We're repelling or deterring yes. them away from our blood. Uh -huh. You know, go find some other blood. Uh -huh. Just go so on. You said spray it on. You can spray it on yourself. Um, yeah, you okay. can spray it on yourself. You can spray it on like the front, the furniture you sit on outside. Uh -huh. You can spray it on the table. Okay. Just let it kind of sit. Um, if you're going to spray it on yourself, 
try to remember to spray it every like two hours or so or however, however long you're outside okay. with in the elements with the mosquitoes. Um, I also have a recipe here for oil spray as well. So you want about 10 to 15 drops of rosemary oil, the essential oil, and about one fourth cup of witch hazel, or you can use rubbing alcohol, either or. Um, one fourth cup of distilled water to a four to six ounce spray bottle. And you just shake it up, make sure everything is incorporated together, mixed together, and you can use that as a spray as well. I tend to like the oil spray more because oil and water don't mix. And so when you spray it, it kind of stays a little bit longer because the oil is there and it's not mixing with the water, so it's going to stay. So, But keep in mind, when you're spraying it on yourself, it may stain a little bit because it has that the essential oil in it. Okay, so the next one is centronella and lemongrass. So lemongrass is closely related to centronella. So have you seen, um, I get, they make candles now mm -hmm. off and they, or they have centronella candles. Mm -hmm. That is kind of closely located. located. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is closely related to lemongrass. Um, citronella is an essential oil. Um, and it repels flies and mosquitoes, mm -hmm. lemongrass and citronella. Um, it also repels moths, cockroaches, which <laughs> it would have been, like you said, mm -hmm. a good thing to know about that. <laughs> yes. But living mm -hmm. in those type of environments, you don't know. You're mm -hmm. just not educated. They don't. People don't share. Yeah, Why are people mothballs. not sharing information? Because right. those mothballs, like they gave me an asthma attack. Yeah, they're so, very strong. Yeah. So yeah. That would have definitely been helpful. To know. Yeah. Yeah, and <laughs> also you can place a piece of cheesecloth around in the kitchen or in your closet and drop a couple of the lemongrass or the um, citronella drops on that cheesecloth and put it in your closets, wherever you see the mm -hmm. moths or the mm -hmm. roaches mm -hmm. or whatever, whatever you're trying to repel and just put it in there and it's safe for animals, it's safe for babies, it's safe for people in general, you know, if they, get on it or the baby happens to touch it, you know, just wash the hands, mm -hmm. but it's not something where you got to call poison control right. to figure mm -hmm. out, oh God, she mm -hmm. ingested, you know, so it's, it's fairly safe. Um, you can also burn lemongrass oil in candles. So if you just have a regular candle and you're sitting out, maybe you and the, the husbands want to sit out and have a good evening outside, take a regular candle, drop a couple of the lemongrass drops in there. And as it's the the lemongrass and the candle is burning, it, you know, fragrance the air mm. and the mosquitoes smell that and they're like, ooh, mm. yuck, that stinks, mm. we're not going over there. Mm. And they'll stay away from you. Um, let's see, what else? Um, if you decide to plant lemongrass, which it smells amazing, it smells amazing, a lemongrass plant, it grows quickly in many different climates. Um, you can extract the oil by grinding the leaves or cutting the lower stalk of the plant. So if you don't want to deal with the essential oil, you can just cut a couple of stalks off the plant and grind it that way mm -hmm. and do like I did in the first recipe that I gave you, boil it in some water. Mm -hmm. But it's quicker and easy to buy the uh, essential saying, oil. Can you just get that from the store? <laughs> yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yes. And a fun fact, my fun fact for today, Lemongrass is an active ingredient in many of the deep base um, commercial insect repellents. So like off and I don't know any of the other ones. Um, is it only off? Is there, do you guys know of another chemical? Cause I don't use them so I wouldn't know, but I do remember being a young child, I remember off. So my next essential oil or plant I wanna talk about is lavender. Everybody loves the smell. I don't think I've ever met anybody that doesn't like yeah. the smell of lavender. Mm -hmm. Did the two of you like lavender? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, it repels moths, fleas, flies, mosquitoes, and ticks. Mm -hmm. But they don't um, like lavender. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, the smell, once again, the mosquitoes detest. Mm -hmm. They just hate lavender. Um, it has about a 93% repellent rate against mosquitoes indoors and about a 53% outdoors. Okay. So I think that's pretty high. Mm -hmm. um, 
when you think about it, as far as, you know, on the outside. Um, so for my recipe for the, the lavender, um, I would, I, what I do is I mix one part of the lavender essential oil drops with 10 parts of witch hazel in a spray bottle. Shake it up real good, and you can spray it on your clothes, on your skin, like I said before, every two hours to keep it an effective shield mm -hmm. from the mosquitoes. Um, in addition to repelling insects, lavender oil is also a remedy for the insect's bites. Mm -hmm. So for mosquito bites, mm -hmm. you know, you can put the lavender oil on there um, and it soothes the itching and the inflammation. Mm -hmm. And to, of course, you know, you can't put the essential oils directly on saying, your skin. Yeah, we, we talked about that yeah, last yeah. time. So what you would do is you would mix 10 to 20 drops of the essential oils in the carrier oils. In the carrier oils I spoke of of last episode, olive oil, coconut oil, almond, jojoba, or avocado oil. And the amount of oil you would use in that recipe is two tablespoons. Okay. You mix it together and you can put it on, you know, burns, mm -hmm. you can, insect bites, anything that's inflamed or itching. Uh, chicken pox. Do kids even get chicken pox no. anymore? Mm -mm. Oh, okay. Not like what we knew. Okay. It's like three bumps now. Oh, they get okay. Yeah. Well, I've, I've never had chicken pox, so. Oh. Oh, well. oh, don't no. even talk to me then. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know. <laughs> My next one is peppermint oil. So peppermint oil is known as the holy grail of natural pest repellents. Okay. Um, leaves around the house. Um, you can take the leaves from the peppermint plant and you can just leave them around the house. You can put them in entryways. So like your door frames or window sills or garage or anywhere there, there's an opening. Mm -hmm. You can put the peppermint leaves there and you could take the oil as well. Get a couple of, um, you know, maybe cotton balls or the flat, um, makeup mm -hmm. pads and, dab a couple of the uh, peppermint oil drops on it and just set it right there and it will repel the insects um, mm -hmm. out of the home. Um, you can also make um, like satchels. So get the cheesecloth again, and it's actually called cheesecloth. It's just, it just looks like a, a thinner piece of gauze. I don't know why they call it cheesecloth, but that's just the name of it. And you would find it in like the kitchen section or season set in the grocery store because most people use it to cook with. Okay. Um, and you would get that and get just a piece of floss and tie, put the um, peppermint leaves in that little satchel, tie it up and put it in the same, like in the windowsill. Mm -hmm. um, if you're sitting outside, if you keep a table outside with your outside furniture, just keep it on the table. Mm -hmm or you know, put it in a, a flower pot or something and mm. it will repel the insects. Um, some of the insects or bugs that peppermint oil or peppermint plant repels are ticks, spiders, roaches, moths, flies, fleas, beetles, and ants. Mm. And I was gonna bring, I found this, uh, I was very shocked that like Home Depot now has like a small section, but it's progress of a lot of natural um, alternatives now from weed killer to mm -hmm. bug repellents mm -hmm. and killers and all that stuff. And they have this one little section for ants. So mm -hmm. like, you know, you don't have to buy that nasty mm -hmm. bug spray. It's a little satchel and it has peppermint in it. It has, it's for bug, uh, ants, mm -hmm. it has peppermint, um, lavender and I think lemongrass and it's in a little satchel and you just put it in your pantry or wherever mm -hmm. you're having the ant issues and the ants will just mm -hmm. go bye-bye. Mm -hmm. yeah. And her ants don't like cinnamon either. They don't. So yeah, they don't. Natural mm -hmm. remedy. Um, let's see. So for in the home, I have another recipe for you. So you want to use two cups of water, about 10 to 15 drops of the peppermint oil, you want to combine the, order, the water and the peppermint oil in a spray bottle. Once again, shake it up, and you can spray this solution in entry spots, like I said, and places where you think the bugs or insects may hide. Mm -hmm. um, an alternative to the spray, like I said, you can get a couple of drops and put it on like a, a cotton ball or whatever and put it in places where you know that you see these mm -hmm. uh, pesky insects. 
okay? For fly repellent, my recipe is four ounces of distilled water. You want two to three ounces of witch hazel and about 40 to 50 drops of peppermint oil. So you, you two might probably say, well, Tamara, who's going to stay in there and count 40, 50 drops? <laughs> I just say, just put a lot. <laughs> just put a lot. <laughs> okay. But being the OCD person that I am, I will stand there and count 40, 50 drops. <laughs> but just, just, just put a lot. When you okay. think it's like, oh, my God, is this enough? That's enough. Okay. Is and the reason why you say distilled water? That's distilled is. water is because, once again, tap water has a lot of, chemicals oh, okay. and okay. and you got to remember I'm also keeping in mind that those who have pets or little children crawling around mm -hmm. or pets you know walking around mm -hmm. and you know babies and toddlers put their hands sure. in their mouth so we, we're trying to be as safe as possible just for those things okay. so, and a lot of people okay. walk around in their house barefooted right. I don't right. I gotta have socks on mm -hmm. but just for that reason right. okay. and also just to um, protect surfaces you know, some people have hardwood floors. Some people have marble or granite countertops. Okay. So distilled water. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, and let's see. So another fly repellent that I have is, you know, you get a container, get a tin can or like a glass container with the lid, and you want one ounce of witch, ha witch hazel. You want one ounce of vegetable oil. Okay, you want 50 to 60 drops of the peppermint <laughs> oil or lavender oil. And then you want to get a, just a clean cloth. It could be just like a, a washcloth maybe you don't use anymore or a dishcloth or something. And you want to combine the witch hazel with the vegetable oil. And then you want to put the essential oils into the container of choice, whether it's the tin can or a glass container. And you want to place the cloth in that container and pour that mixture, the oil and all of that mixture over the cloth. Cover it and let it sit overnight. So say you, you're doing a cookout, you already know when you're gonna have it. Prepare this the night before, put it in that container and close it and let it sit overnight. Once you're ready to be outside and entertain, maybe before your guest gets there or the food is being prepared, you wanna place that container on the table outside where you're sitting. Um, or you can place it in like a cotton bag and hang it on like a doorknob of your outside door or maybe on the back of the chair that you're sitting at. And um, it will repel the flies. Mm. Sure. So um, that's all I had for the essential oils and repelling, you know, bugs. Of course I have a plethora of <laughs> recipes for, you know, killing certain type of things or I keep saying that word, yeah. repelling. Yeah. We don't, we don't want to kill the yeah. little critters, yeah. you know, because yeah. they're food for somebody else, but just not for us. <laughs> they're annoying for us. But um, if there's something that, you know, you guys want to know about to get rid of, just, you know, shoot the nerd's corner a little question, yeah. Yeah. and I'll see what I can yeah. dig in my arsenal and find, Definitely. as well as the listeners and viewers. If you have any answer, I mean, questions or anything about, how to get rid of something or a rodent in your house. Well, rodents and insects are different. I don't do mice. I don't do mice. My suggestion is run. That, that's, I mean, you know, I don't have anything oh, <laughs> to help with mice or rats. But if you know, email us or drop a comment and I'll dig through my arsenal and see what I can find for you. All right, I'm gonna need that recipe because my daughter will be going to camp this summer. And okay. Keep okay. the bugs off her. So, okay. Yes. Thank yeah. You. Appreciate yeah. it. I got gotcha. you. Good. Appreciate gotcha. it. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Heal with Us. Remember, healing is a process, so take it one day at a time. And also remember that we are available across all social media platforms: YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. You can also email us at healwithus3 at gmail.com with any questions or comments or even just suggestions about the show. Heal with us. business.
Deal With Us 3 is brought to you by Carpet Savers of Tide Water Inc. Carpet Cleaning and Carpet Restoration. We'll make you love your carpet again. Cheaper than a steamer, better than a pro. Scan the QR code for discounts and appointments. Carpet Savers of Tide Water.